Okay, so in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to recrystallize sodium carbonate. And um, this is a pretty simple demonstration, so I think you guys should enjoy it. And I actually made a pretty big mistake in this video. And I think this will serve as a good demonstration of what not to do and what to pay attention to if you guys decide to try this out on your own. And the reason I'm doing this is because I need it for a later on video about caffeine extraction. So all I'll be using for this extraction is obviously sodium carbonate, some beakers, a hot plate, and a balance. And it should also be noted that sodium carbonate is an irritant, so it's important to wear the proper safety equipment such as goggles, gloves, and a lab coat. So I start by weighing out the amount of sodium carbonate I have, and this is where I made my big mistake, and I forgot to tear the balance. So later on, I start adding water, and as you can see, I've added way too much water which will simply cause us to lose a bunch of sodium carbonate in solution and will decrease our yield, but this is not the end of the world since I only need a bit for my next experiment. As you can see, the sample is very contaminated and there's a bunch of brown insoluble stuff floating around. So later on, I'll be doing a vacuum filtration to separate this, but first off, I'm setting up a hot plate and stirring to start dissolving most of the solid chunks that should be sodium carbonate. It should also be noted that sodium carbonate is still relatively soluble in cold water, and so it's pretty hard to recrystallize and attain a good yield because of this inherent property of it. I tried looking for other solvents that would do a better job of this, but unfortunately I couldn't find any. And if you guys have any ideas on how I can improve my yield, then please leave a comment in the comment section. On top of that, the fact that I made a pretty big mistake when I was calculating the amount of water I needed didn't really help, and so I estimate my yield will be below 50% for this procedure. Once all the solid chunks had dissolved, I decided to proceed to a vacuum filtration, and unfortunately this got very slow with time, so I filtered off the rest into a coffee filter and did a gravity filtration, which went much faster. And I think it's pretty interesting that here you can see the quality difference between doing a vacuum filtration and a gravity filtration. So on the left is what came through the coffee filter, and on the right is what came through the vacuum filter. So you can clearly see that the vacuum filtrate is much cleaner than the gravity filtrate. At this point, I realized my mistake, so I decided to try and boil off more water until I saw some crystals appear. So I decided to heat it more aggressively with my burner to reduce the amount of water present in the solution and try and precipitate some crystals. Once I had evaporated enough water, I took the mixture off the burner and placed it on my now cold hot plate to let it cool to just above room temperature. So as you can see, some nice white crystals formed. And once this happened, I placed it in the refrigerator for several hours, and this gave me a bunch of nice white sodium carbonate crystals. I then proceed to separate the crystals from the solution by vacuum filtration, and this is kind of slow, but at the end we're left with a nice yield of fluffy, pure sodium carbonate crystals. These are still kind of wet, but at the time I didn't have a vacuum desiccator or anything of the sort, so I didn't really have a choice and I kind of just left them wet. These crystals should be quite pure, and this is good because I'll be using them to extract caffeine from coffee in an upcoming video. If you guys don't want to miss that, then please subscribe to my channel and click the notifications bell icon. Now I add all of the crystals to the original container, and after scraping off all the different containers and filters that I used, I end up with about 11.8 grams of crystals, which is about 30% in yield, and that's honestly pretty terrible. So I'll be recrystallizing the filtrate from the vacuum filtration. I start off by pouring all of the filtrate from the vacuum filtration into my large beaker. I then proceed to wash all the different filters and pieces of apparatus that I used, try and dissolve as much of the crystals to improve my yield. Once I'm done preparing my solution, I place it on the hot plate and heat it up to try and evaporate off as much water as possible to reduce the solubility of sodium carbonate. Then, once that's done, I take it off the hot plate and place it in the fridge, then the freezer overnight, which leaves me with some nice white crystals stuck in ice. I then place the beaker on a hot plate and gently heat it so as to melt the crystals but not re-dissolve the sodium carbonate. I also place in a thermometer and carefully monitor the temperature to prevent it from going above 5 degrees Celsius. I also turn on gentle stirring so as to keep an even temperature gradient and again so that we don't dissolve much of the sodium carbonate. Once almost all of the ice blocks have disappeared, I take it off the hot plate and set up another vacuum filtration in order to separate out the crystals from the solution. 
I'm not sure if it's because I just have a really weak vacuum or because the crystals are extremely tiny, but this was getting extremely slow. So as I did before, I filtered the rest through a coffee filter, even though this meant that I would be losing a bit of the crystals. At this point, I didn't really care, so I just decided to go forward with it. And so I filter most of the solution through a coffee filter. If you guys are going to try this out, then it might be a good idea to filter first through a coffee filter and then through vacuum filters. The coffee filter gets rid of the big crystals and the vacuum filter then only needs to separate out tiny crystals and both methods should be fairly quick. Once I'm done filtering the solution, I gather all the crystals and scrape them onto a watch glass on my balance. So you can see that the yield is about 1.18 grams of crystals, which in total amounts to just over 13 grams with the other batch. And honestly, I'm not really sure why this yield is so bad, but I think it has to do with the fact that sodium carbonate can still dissolve up to 7 grams per 100 milliliters of water, even at 0 degrees Celsius. So it's impossible to get all of them out of the solution. So here I've placed some of my nice pure sodium carbonate crystals on the watch glass and as you can see they're nicely formed and quite large.